Hey folks, welcome back to another Dice Tower Preview. I'm Mark. And I'm Randy. Today we're taking a look at Home of the Brave. Home of the Brave is a game for two to six players, ages 16 and up, and each game takes three to four hours to play. Great. Well, let's go experience some political intrigue and possible blackmail. Now, as we said, this is indeed a political game. However, don't touch that dial, that That's remote right. control, right. That, that mouse or that tablet screen, because this game has elements in it that might even appeal to those people out there who don't like politics. Very true. Uh, yep. We were both pleasantly surprised yeah. that it wasn't just focused on pure... Uh, trying to persuade each other, that that's was right. all it was about. It wasn't about deep politics. There's a lot of elements here that, that are interesting and are visible even just from the minute you sit down at the table and look at the board. Um, over on the left-hand side, you see something called the Path of Bravery. Now, um, I don't know if I consider a lot of politicians brave, <laughs> but uh, there's, a, there's an old adage that uh, fortune favors the bold. Mm -hmm. And in this case, fortune favors the brave, brave. Because there's a lot of things you have to do here to try to get bravery tokens. Yeah. So your character, which starts at the bottom, uh, can move up this path of bravery and ultimately get these star tokens, which will allow you to win the game. That's right. uh, there's various uh, key uh, benefits of moving up to each level, and we'll cover those in a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, the next segment you see here, this pie shape, uh, it's nothing to do with Trivial Pursuit. It actually has to do with different uh, elements or different areas of, of um, the political arena. Yeah. Uh, here in the yellow, you see society. Here in pink is uh, the media. media. Uh, the blue is politics. Green is business. And the gray is the criminal, criminal underworld. Yeah. Now, each player uh, has the opportunity to put their tokens uh, uh, either on the outskirts of this. It means they're involved in this. They're not mm -hmm. a top leader, but they are an influential person in there. Uh, or move eventually move them to the center, and there can only be one person here in the center, and they are the high muckety muck of that yes, area. Yes, indeed. Uh, so, and they get special benefits of, of doing that. So, uh, players will start with tokens on the um, outskirts of two of these areas, and they'll have an opportunity to move them into new areas or advance them in existing areas as the mm -hmm. game goes by. Uh, here in the National Mall, we see a number of cubes. Now, Mark's not a big fan of cubes, but, uh, <laughs> but I am. Uh, but it didn't dissuade him from That's playing right. this game. Uh, these represent supporters. supporters yeah. Now, the National Mall, for those of you who haven't been down there, it's, it's uh, the area in Washington, D.C., a lot of people are milling mm -hmm. about. And so you might think of this as each of these cubes represents somebody that you could go up to and, and convince them of, of your way of thinking. That's and right. In, in the game... The red cubes represent Republicans. The uh, blue uh, cubes are Democrats. The uh, yellow cubes are activists. And the gray ones are criminals. So you might solicit support from any number of these any, people. Yeah. Uh, and when you do that, there is also a random element that instead of adding cubes after the first round, instead of adding cubes directly to the National Mall, you add them to a bag and then randomly, randomly pick, pick out. Yes. So you don't know who might show up. You don't. You don't. So, you might say, oh, I've added... 14 Republicans here, and guess what? I've pulled out two activists and 12 Democrats yeah, that's here. That's right. So you, ne you never know, and that, that randomness is kind of nice. Up here in the upper right, you're right, is uh, the voting, the deck of voting cards. And uh, for every round except for the first round, right. you will draw one of these cards, and it has on it an issue that you will vote uh, pro or con against. And then here at the in the lower right, you see the recess area. And after each player has completed their actions, uh, during the action phase, um, they have the option to choose either one of these cubes, and we support our cubes, or one of these neutral cards. Now, neutral cards can come in the form of um, uh, influential people that you might bring to your side, lobbyists that you send to somebody else, and we'll talk about those in a second because those are uh, this is one of the things that amuse me most about this game, <laughs> uh, as well as various legal actions. So, as you look at the board, you say, "Wow, there's a lot of vectors where I can uh, invest my resources and right. manipulate things." So. Uh, just by when people sit down at the table, I think they'll find this a very uh, interesting or appealing game visually. Yeah. All right, at the start of the game, you're going to select your character, and all these characters are somehow aligned. Either Republicans, they're with the criminal element, there's a journalist, and so forth. So there's lots of different choices here, which is pretty neat, and it really keeps the game replayable by doing different characters. Yeah, yeah. So what you're going to do is look at your big base card, and you're going to see where you start your in your domain. So again, based on what character you choose, you're going to place tokens in the domains either closer to potentially the criminal element or the media element or Republican, whatever. So there's definitely some different choices to be made there based on what character you're picking. Also, each card tells you your starting resources, and these resources are either money or potentially supporter cubes. And if you have someone like the journalist, 
she gets a bunch of different types of supporters and money. Basically one of each. One yeah, of each. Yeah. So it's def like I said, there's a lot of interesting choices to be made on what character you're going to start with. Now, in addition to the starting resources um, and starting your, your tokens here in the domains and the base of the, the Path of Bravery, you also get different types of cards. First, you get to draw three cards from your basic deck. Now, these will allow you to perform actions, and we'll talk about those in a, in a, in a minute. You also get these weakness cards with the skull in the back from each of your opponents. And likewise, you have to give your own weaknesses to them. <laughs> so this allow these are cards that are tailored specifically to that person. So the weaknesses you're giving away, uh, those cards can't be played against anybody else except right. you. And they do have impacts based upon your particular character. It's uh, a slick way of doing blackmail. It, it is. It really is. Yes. And, and these can come into play in negotiations as well. Yep. These cards come in, uh, each one I believe there's five different types, and there's three of each type. Yeah. So if you're able to play one, it does something bad. If you're able to play a set of three um, three matching cards, they do something even, even worse. worse. Like really bad. Yes, they do. And we'll give you examples about that in a moment. The last type of card that you will draw at the beginning of the game is you get to draw, each player gets to draw two mm -hmm. gold cards. Now these gold cards with a star in the back, these represent ways you can get these, uh, these uh, star tokens, which are the way you win the game. As soon as a player gets to four star tokens, you complete the round, and then whoever has the most uh, star tokens wins the game. So between these cards, these gold cards, mm -hmm. and the Path of Bravery, the top two tiers, those are the ways that you, you strive to get these star tokens and ultimately win the game. Right. All right, at the start of every round, except the first round, voting takes place. You can really wheel and deal to make these votes go either way. Um, the other thing that you're given as a player is you're giving voting, voting tokens that you will reveal when the vote comes up. It's a blind vote until everybody is ready to vote, and That's then right. it reveal all at the same time to see how the vote goes. That's right. So players are given these, uh, each player is given one white and one black token. Mm -hmm. And at the beginning of the voting phase, as Mark says, the voting phase happens beginning with the second round and every round uh, subsequent, uh, you get a voting card. And the voting card has an issue on it, and it shows the results and consequences if uh, the vote passes, shown up here by the white disc, and that's what you would use if you're for the, the issue, right. uh, as well as what happens if the vote fails. And this is shown down here by the black disc. Now, this is, again, the prototype, so the actual finished artwork may look a little bit different. Um, each outcome has an alignment. These are aligned to specific uh, areas, and they have they have probably uh, 15 different symbols, yeah, lots such, of different such symbols. as uh, the gun lobby, mm -hmm. and here's the media. So... Um, those might influence how you vote. Right. And one of the things that will... Or not. Or, or not vote. Because you, maybe you don't care about either yeah, of Yeah, and you yeah. have the option of abstaining. Yes. And I do. think that's one of the keys is that people might say, well, you know, Mark doesn't have an interest in this. He doesn't gain anything. He doesn't lose anything. So I really want to make certain he, he votes and votes my way. Yep. So what you'll see up here is you will see um, this is a benefit of the vote passing. And what this says is anybody who has a, a token in the, um, what is that? That's the media area. They get bravery points. Bravery po points uh, come into play in the game. They're one, uh, a very key currency in the they game. Really they really are a key currency. They not only help you do actions, but they also help move you up the path of bravery. And then down here, this shows you the number of, of supporter cubes that go into the bag, and then you take that same number of cubes randomly from the bag and put them in the National Mall. So in this case, if um, media against violence is the issue that, at hand, and you it, it passed, that would allow everybody on the, the media track to get two bravery points, and it would allow uh, more activists in the bag and ultimately in the mall. If it went against it, and the vote didn't pass, or the bill didn't pass, you end up with more criminals that go into the bag and ultimately, statistically, would mm -hmm. end up in the mall as well. Now, we'll talk about lobbyists, but in front of you, you will have various cards, and some of them will cause you to vote in ways that you might not want to vote, but you want to avoid these negative consequences. Exactly. So uh, we'll come back to lobbyists in a second. Um, another thing Mark said is that as you vote, so each player takes one of these two uh, tokens, and they can't put both in their hand, only one or the other, or none at all if you're right. abstaining. You take one of these in your hand, and you put your, your, your closed hand in the middle of the table. When everybody's, everybody's ready to reveal. vote, then you reveal it. Now, 
you're saying, well, what happens, Randy, if there is a tie? <laughs> oh, and this is very interesting, It's right? very interesting. Because you can add all kinds of supporter tokens. You can. And uh, money, know, money. And bravery, bravery token. So before you vote, there's opportunities to make deals with people mm -hmm. and say, if you vote this way, I'll give you something. In fact, you can say, I'll, yeah. here, here's here's three dollars please vote my way right but another way of influencing the vote is you can hope to break ties by putting uh, cubes and uh, bravery tokens and dollars in your hands so when you reveal it if there is a tie between black and white between passing and not passing um, who whichever player not team no, not but whenever team. player has the most additional um, supporters and tokens and such in their right. hand that player gets to decide which way it goes so if several people have put tokens mm -hmm. in their hand, no matter whether you want or not, all those go away. Yes. So be careful about yeah. investing too much because you lose it all. And the question is, is it really worth investing a lot to right. get this particular vote and to pass? The thing about voting too is that it generates some really interesting table talk for, for this game. As you're playing back and forth, there's a lot of wheeling and dealing back and forth. And you really can try to push people in different directions. It's, it's pretty entertaining. Now, I want to take a brief aside to mention the manual here. Uh, we do a lot of previews. We play a lot of, uh, do a lot of reviews yep. as well, or have done in the past. And we've seen manuals in a variety of forms. Uh, we want to give the people who yes. made Home of the Brave some commendation because <clears throat> although this is a longer manual, yeah. we felt like it was very well written, even yep. in its prototype form. And there were things that it spelled out very well that, that amused me. And one of them is the silver rule. So the golden rule <laughs> is, is talking good, yeah. about whether cards, if you have rules on cards that conflict yeah. with the manual and, and how you deal with those things. And hopefully those are rare. But the silver rule is, and this I mentioned this now in the context of voting, you can make whatever deals you want to, but you don't necessarily have to, to follow have, through. Yeah, your commitments <laughs> are kind of fluid here. Maybe yeah. like so many politicians, you lie. Yes. <laughs> say, so Mark might say, hey, Randy, I'll give you $3 if you vote that way. It's like, oh, yeah, I'll take the $3, and then we all do this, and I didn't vote that way. And so there's no room for people to complain <laughs> about that. Any promises of future actions aren't binding. binding and yeah. that's they just spelled that out right up front. Now, if you and another player say, look, I need three Republicans, and you have three... Um, activists, can we trade those? Any immediate trades must be committed right. to. But um, otherwise, any promises of future actions and saying, I'll do this if you do that, right. those and promises they, can be broken. Yeah, there's just some really interesting wheeling and dealing that can happen. Yeah. I really found that entertaining. Yeah, and it's I think it's very key as you're playing this game, you're playing with people who are of um, more mellow dispositions. Because <laughs> it can be pretty vindictive. Yeah, yeah it yeah, can yeah, be. Yeah, so, yeah. so, But that's the voting aspect of the game. And uh, after you vote, you go to the next phase and begin your actions. All right, now we get to the heart of the game, the actions. And there's so many things you can do here. Mm -hmm. So from your deck, you'll have cards that are basically instant action cards that whatever is on the card, you will do immediately. And then the card will be discarded from the game. Mm -hmm. And there's just a ton of different things these do. You can be acquiring supporter cubes, you can be acquiring money, but typically you're going to have to pay to activate these mm -hmm. cards. However, some don't have a cost. That's true. So, and the other type of card that you're gonna put out in front of you that will have basically infinity uses, <laughs> right? Is the, is the um, static card. Yeah, the fixed cards. Or the fixed yeah. cards. And uh, these cards, basically just live in front of you and you can only have four unless you move up along the bravery track then you potentially can have more out in front of you but these cards throughout the round you can you'll activate one at a time and basically you'll turn it to show that you've used it for that for that round and they again do a variety of things it might just be simply grabbing one supporter cube and then you'll turn the card so these are just ways to get more resources and build up your pile behind your shield so no one really knows what you have going on over there potential resources to spend to gain those star tokens move up the bravery track and different things you might need to do now as you said many of these have costs and because the costs mm -hmm. are sometimes specific and you do see an icon uh, that shows a multicolored cube and that re references basically a general cube it can be any type but many of these uh, cards the costs are specific colors and so yes, some of these absolutely. actions you will take whether yeah. they're instants or by tapping a fixed card or right. playing a new fixed card um, 
are key because they let you transform mm. one resource into another. It's exactly. like I've got a bunch of criminals, I want to turn them into activists, activists. because I need yellow cubes mm -hmm. to play this card. Some cards indeed cost nothing, but those tend to be not as powerful right. as the ones that cost insane amounts. That's right. <laughs> so, And it's important to note too that you'll be starting out with your basic deck of cards. Right. And those cards are on the back, you'll know they're your basic deck because they have a one right. on the back. And and the, the two cards are your advanced deck and they give you way more powerful actions right. and so forth. But again, it's really about uh, pushing and pulling resources and trading in and enhancing them and building them and making them bigger, getting more and more brave tokens and so forth. And as you, you're doing all this with the goal in mind of getting these star tokens. Yes. So you'll find that when you draw your initial goal cards, you'll say, wow, that costs a lot. Yeah. But that's because it takes a while to work there. And likewise, moving up the path of bravery um, is not inexpensive either. It's super and, expensive. And so as you're working towards it, this isn't something that you're just going to succeed right. at overnight. You're working this plan and it's key. I mean, certainly you can try to turtle over in your corner and just do the things you want to do, but it you can you can accelerate your goals yeah. if you negotiate with other players. And a lot of these action cards have multiple paths on them, things that you can do, multiple different things. Right. So you might be able to do two or three things, and at the bottom of your card, it might say, well, if you're willing to give away some weakness, then you can do some really powerful things. Right. So that's you brought up yes. a key thing, is that the costs come in a variety of forms. It can yeah. be in the form of cubes, and as we said, sometimes the cost is mentions general cubes, right. or generic cubes. Um, it can be in the form of dollars. You can give up bravery points. But that element here, it's very key that you, sometimes the cost is, in order <laughs> to, to get the benefit, you have to give away these weaknesses, and sometimes right. more than one. Right. And what you were referencing there at the end is that some of these cubes ha or the cards have multiple effects. There's the basic effect, mm -hmm. and there's the additional effect if you're willing to pay more, and right. both of these are optional. Indeed. So beyond those things, beyond uh, playing an instant and playing a new fixed card and also uh, activating a fixed card, and when you initially play a fixed card, you can activate mm -hmm. it. Yes, you right, can. right away. Right away. Um, you can play these weaknesses, ca weakness cards, uh, as one of your seven actions. Yes, and you, can, you can. Yeah, these which are... prevent someone from maybe using any of their their uh, static cards. Or right, right. Yeah. In fact, yeah. And what you're mentioning is the blocking, mm -hmm. uh, because when you when you <sighs> activate a uh, fixed card, you tap it 90 degrees, and right. then at the at the end of the round, all these cards move 90 degrees counterclockwise. So right. if you tapped it, in theory, it comes back right side up. But as you said, However, <laughs> if you block one of your opponent's cards, what it does is turn it completely upside down, and, and then it takes two rounds, two rounds you know, since back. each round you, you rotate it back 90 degrees. Right. So, so And weakness cards are really the only way to do that. Yes. By invoking their weakness, you're like, sorry, <laughs> we were friends, <laughs> yeah. but not anymore. So that's another thing you can do as one of your actions each, uh, each turn. Uh, the other thing is you will find that many of these cards have in the upper right mm -hmm. some sort of benefit. And you can discard the card rather than right. paying its cost. Just discard the card from the game and get the benefit in the upper right, which can be moving yourself uh, maybe onto a new domain right. or uh, advancing in the domain you're already or in. Or just receiving brave tokens. It could be a bravery token. Yep. It could be getting money. It could mm -hmm. be getting cubes. So sometimes you're looking at a card in your hand and say, this is a really good action, but I can't afford it. I probably won't be able to afford it for several turns. I'll just discard it and to get, get the, the benefits. Yep. Yes. Yep. Um, the next thing you can do is spend a bravery tokens mm -hmm. as your main action and move up the path of bravery. Yes. And you'll see that on the path of bravery, the first <laughs> level will let you, instead of drawing from the base basic deck, you get to draw from your advanced deck. Right. Uh, the next level is instead of being limited to four of these fixed cards in front of you, you get uh, to hold a fifth. And with each of those, you also get some money benefits. Um, the third level up, you get to uh, advance up one of the domains. And if you're already at leader, there's no benefit to that. But right. uh, you can uh, move up in an area you already have a token or um, add a token to an area you don't have a token in yet. And then the last two top tiers have, uh, you get star tokens. Yes. And go ahead. The, the interesting thing here at the bottom of the bravery track mm -hmm. is the fact that there are multiple paths to move yes, up. Yes, that's right. And if you're willing to give up weakness, it's going to cost you less yeah. bravery to move on to the track. So again, some pretty interesting decision making going on. And it's just like life in the sense that sometimes <laughs> you see shortcuts, but yeah. shortcuts might... Maybe 
and Meaning bites take, you in the end. Yes, exactly. <laughs> there are some compromises, sometimes right. some unethical things you have to do to take those shortcuts. Indeed. So the question is, what is it really worth is it? Is it worth it? Yeah. I don't know. So the last thing you can do on, on your turn is to, is to just pass. And if you pass as your action, um, and once you pass, you're done mm -hmm. for the rest of the action phase, um, you get to choose one of these supporter cubes or one of these neutral cards. And these there's three face up uh, at each round, at the beginning of each round, and you get to choose one of these. Now, these uh, cards come in a variety of forms. There are legal actions that you can perform. There are uh, influence car influencer cards. There are people that you can play in front of you. They work <laughs> just like fixed cards. They right. have little silhouettes of people, but they work just the same. You tap them to activate them. But then you have these lobbyist cards, and they show the handcuffs in the upper corner, not because there's something implicitly illegal, but right. because you are handcuffed to certain alignments. Yes. And you don't take these in front of you. You immediately play them in front of one of your opponents. So that so nice. It is. It's one of my favorite parts of the game because when you make deals with lobbyists, they expect you to vote a certain way. Yes, they do. Now, not only do they expect you to vote a certain way, but they're counting on you to persuade everybody else to do the same. Yeah, to, to make a bill, either pass or fail, according mm -hmm. to their desires. The awesome thing about the lobbyist card is because they hold you accountable, not just for your vote, but for the entire passing of, or for the entire result of the vote, that there are consequences if the vote goes the opposite direction right. from how they've desired. So you put these in front of people to basically handcuff them to a certain choice. And you know then what they're likely to do when certain votes come up. You look at the vote, you see an alignment here, you say, here's somebody who, this is a vote, uh, our example we gave before was about gun control. Um, and if you see somebody over there who's got something that says they really don't want there to be any additional controls on guns, we say, now I know where you stand because if you yeah. don't persuade the rest of us, then... Um, then you have a consequence. And typically that consequence is you have to give away weakness cards. Right. So the way you can then sell your vote, and it's a, just a shameful thing to even think <laughs> about. <laughs> sell your vote. Yep. But you can then say, I know you want me to vote a certain way. I don't have any benefit on the outcome of this vote. But, you know, for a few bravery points. I might be inclined to help you out. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, that's the last thing you can do is pass, draw one of these cards. And uh, these cards can be very interesting in not only how they help you, but hurt your opponents. Indeed. One last thing I want to mention about the book. I gave them kudos before because I felt like the book was well organized. Yeah. Uh, there's a nice little appendix at the end that dereferences all of the icons. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of icons in this game, but they did a good job of making them fairly intuitive so that you'll remember them after you played them the first right. time. But there's also a, a page appendix in the back that just lists all the icons. But the thing that I want to uh, commend them on perhaps the most yeah. and encourage other game designers to do as well is there is a tutorial. And it really and, teaches you how to play. It does. It's it a, does it's a good a, job. It's a three-round tutorial. Uh, they've intentionally kind of uh, gradually introduced you to concepts and mm -hmm. say, you know, here's the first round and don't get in a hurry. Just we're going to show you how to get cubes off the board and transfer cu cubes yep. or, or into other types of resources. And the second round, they don't even do voting in the second round of the right. tutorial. They say, let us show you the additional actions you can take. And then they introduce voting in the third round. So they've intentionally created a Spoon feeding is probably the wrong no, word, but, they really, but it's, it's it, a really good teaching tool. Yeah, the so, tutorial is. So uh, again, commendations on that part of the rule book. And again, designers out there, if any of you are watching this, please do the same because yeah. sometimes learning new games is very difficult and first impressions are everything. So Indeed. thank you guys for doing that. All right, folks, as a reminder, once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview. Everything you've seen here has been in prototype form and the graphics are changing and rules still may be in flex. So definitely keep an eye on the campaign for any changes that may occur. So with all that said, you know, this was an interesting game for me because uh, I'm definitely not a politically driven person and I, I had reservations, but you know, in the end, we had a really good time we playing did. this. Mm -hmm. So how about you? I, I think we did, it was, it was a pleasant surprise. Um, I'm hoping that we get a chance to review the, the finished product in the future, yeah. but uh, we pulled a couple of our friends in on this to yeah. be our guinea pigs. And it we was did, a really interesting night. It was, yeah. and, and I didn't win at all. Right. <laughs> fact, we played the tutorial, and it did take us a while to, to learn, but it was it was done in a way that I think we all uh, clicked pretty clicked quickly, really quickly and then began enjoying And it's really, the, bottom line, it's just like a resource management type game. It really, is. You're really just trying to get these so you can get these and then get those. Yeah. yeah. You know, that kind of thing. So. Uh, there's just a lot going on uh, and, and some really neat 
again, some really neat decision making. I would agree with so, that. So, if this looks like a game that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they would appreciate your support. So I think that's it from us. That's it. And until next time, we'll, we'll see, see you at the table. table. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.